Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to 25 Days of Tonalism Volume 2. Um, the study I am bringing you today is uh, painted after John Francis Murphy. Um, the title is Landscape 1898. Now, is that the actual title? We don't really know. John Francis Murphy is an interesting case of being this phenomenally great painter that uh, there are no books about. Um, the closest thing there is, and if you don't own it, I highly recommend you get it, is a history of American tonalism uh, by David A. Cleveland, and it's just uh, not that long ago been uh, reprinted in the second or maybe third edition and that has a pretty sizable chapter on John Francis Murphy um, with quite a, go a lot of good biographical information there um, it's not a book though and I'd love to see there's tons of books on George Ness who granted was um, maybe a bit, uh, a bit more inspired in in some ways but when you look at John Francis Murphy's uh, his work, there he there's a lot less. He does a lot less clinkers than uh, than Ines, and uh, was actually more consistent, if not quite as great a genius, but still phenomenally amazing painter. Now, I've been working on the study after uh, John Francis Murphy in the studio on and off um, of one of his better like uh, paintings. I think it's called Golden Sunset or something like that. Um, and uh, that's looking really awesome. A bit, bit larger in scale than these five by sevens I've been doing here. Um, and as I've discussed, uh, I'm also like today. I think I'm working on it's a dewy, and it's another really orangey sunset study. This is in uh, going to be volume three. Uh, could be four. I don't know. I'm losing track. Um, uh, anyway, it's the next, uh, it's uh, it's volume three, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's the next bunch of tonalist studies that I uh, have been working on. When I have some moments, like today is Saturday. Um, yesterday uh, in the studio, I uh, actually did a third pass on a couple paintings and a second pass on another. Unfortunately, some of my um, videotaping went awry. I thought I was going to try and be clever and do a manual focus situation. Sometimes uh, I've had a problem on the uh, larger painting with the camera focusing on my shoulder instead of the painting that I'm working on. Um, yeah, that's because I'm using an autofocus, so I thought, well, I'll try a manual focus and, you know, what happens? Uh, you know, uh, well, two of the paintings I worked on worked out okay. Um, but the third, the whole thing is blurred, and I deleted it, but then I, I kept it anyway. You can still kind of see what I'm doing, even if it's not in focus, so um, don't know if I'll ever post that up on YouTube, but uh, it'll be in the archive, and uh, that was kind of this interesting painting of a really dark, uh, you're in a dark uh, wooded area, you're coming uh, up a road into a lighted area, uh, which I admit is a, uh, a subject that uh, interests me and I've done quite a lot, uh, sometimes successfully and sometimes less so. But uh, uh, anyway, a decent day of painting, but uh, today I'm faced with either starting a larger painting uh, or just doing maybe a couple of studies, so I'm thinking the studies are going to be in the offing. Anyway, interestingly, this uh, Dewey is uh, its actually replacing. It's the first time that I've gone after a study that I've decided that it wasn't going to be suitable. Um, and uh, I forget who the actual painting I was doing a study after. It was this, it, I just... I don't know why I went after it. I, I don't like the composition. I don't like the colors, and uh, some I probably kicked the uh, 
the tripod and the video camera by mistake and so the video didn't turn out and I took all that as a sign that like screw this one I don't like it and so that's why I'm replacing it with this Dewey that I'm doing today and uh, uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun that's more my kind of thing and um, one thing to keep in mind with uh, these uh, studies is there's a lot of paintings I can do studies of out there but I tend to choose ones that resonate with the type of work that I do um, within you know c certain parameters sometimes I'll pick things that was stretch me out a bit like uh, you know uh, that I, I wouldn't necessarily do but that I have uh, you know um, I can relate to as an artist and uh, I won't be doing studies after things that I can't relate to as an artist that's for dang sure um, so uh, Francis Murphy, he's a big inspiration to me. I really wish, uh, John Francis Murphy, I uh, really wish that uh, I could uh, see some of his actual paintings. All I, I've been, the only way I've been able to interact with his work is online. And um, it's amazing how few really high res photos of his work are out there. Some of these studies I've done have been uh, created from very, very low res uh, um, images. Uh, which isn't such a drawback uh, given that I'm doing a study that's five by seven so it's not like I need a bunch of detail anyway or that he worked with tons of detail but one of the big factors to his success as a painter was the textural quality of his work and mm, it's been a while since I've read that chapter I just referred to um, in the uh, history of American tonalism by David A. Cleveland, um, one uh, thing that that he I recall him mentioning in there was that he would do quite a lot of textural work, pardon me, to the um, surface of his canvas or board um, prior to painting, and that he was quite fastidious about this. And you can really see that he employs certain dry brushing and glazing techniques quite extensively in his work, and. Um, those almost always work better with more texture. You can, especially the uh, the dry brushing, um, well, the glazing too. The glazing sits in the little ruts, and the uh, dry brushing hits the peaks. So, um, you know, it's a pretty effective technique. And really, um, pardon me, I don't think I'm coming down with anything, but I have been sneezing a little bit. So. Uh, one of the, uh, the th main things that kind of moved me into doing more dry brushing, and I've always done a bit of glazing, but more dry brushing uh, was uh, the first uh, pass of uh, studies I did um, uh, after Tonalist Masters, and that's 100 Days of Tonalism. And there's a playlist I've created now. You can, you can check all that out. Um, it's 100... <laughs> paintings, uh, that's a hundred videos, but keep in mind a lot of those, uh, when I was first posting up uh, videos of my studies, a lot of those are only four or five minutes long, so not nearly as long as uh, the ones I do now, um, which are generally around the 10 to 12 minute mark, uh, which is good. That's about as long as I can uh, ramble off the top of my head. And uh, speaking of that, I have uh, still been uh, you know, I, I really want to write essays on the blog. It's just the amount of time it's freed up for me not having to do so um, has been a good thing. And unfortunately, time is the limiting factor behind um, all of our endeavors. I mean, you don't have infinite amounts of time to do things. This is one of the reasons I keep, you know, wanting to get into uh, back into doing my music and stuff. But uh, the visual art, uh, I feel like efforts put into that are a time better spent since, you know, it's quite a bit more um, easy to be successful with that than it is with music. Um, not that being successful is necessarily the, uh, the uh, only determining factor, but um, uh, 
What else was I going to get into? Oh, yeah, so these playlists. I don't know if I'll get the time to, like, add this to my John Francis Murphy playlist, but I set up a playlist, and the playlist of several artists I've done studies of. So, like, if you're a fan of my studies after Murphy, um, there's a playlist with all of those now, so you don't have to jump around. Uh, same goes for Charles Warren Eaton and George Ines. Also, Camille Corot. So those are the four main guys I've done lots of multiple studies after and then after that it, it, there's maybe people I've done five or six studies after I can't really think of who maybe someone like uh, Mitchell Bannister Edward Mitchell Bannister I think I've probably done five but um, I don't know if he uh, justifies a playlist for him but they are there so if that's your thing um, not to mention uh, I've sorted out and separated a uh, playlist of studies uh, that I've done and then another playlist of just the larger paintings because it's all interspersed on the actual channel so um, I don't actually watch a lot of YouTube playlists myself so maybe you know this is something that you know is useful to some and not to others I don't know also uh, we're getting kind of close to the end I've got a page up on Sachi, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm trying to get, I, tomorrow I will add some new art to that, I guarantee it, so um, stay tuned for that. And um, also, if you like my painting videos, uh, you can click subscribe and, uh, and join the happy crew of video watchers um, of my channel. That would be great. Um, I s sort of, oh yeah. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. I have the blog, and the, the blog will feature a larger, more detailed um, image of this painting, so you can go check that out. And, and you can get to there through my website, landscapepainter.co.nz. I will be back tomorrow, so uh, we'll see you then. And meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.